This afternoon, I saw a press release from the CF Foundation saying that a Vertex drug that combined Alexacaftor, Tezacaftor, and Ibacaftor, which are all Kaleidico variants, I believe, got approved by the FDA. And every Kaleidico variant up till now only worked for one F508 delta mutation plus one f other functioning mutation. Um, in other words, a non-stop and non-nonsense mutation, um, like what I have. I have F508 delta and R553X, um, and that X at the end of the other one means that there is the bad gene in the CFTR strand, um, is one that tells the RNA to stop copying. So not only is it a copy that doesn't work, it's only like half a copy. So there's like no working CFTR protein in my body basically is what that means. Um, and I've always been told that basically the only way that they can fix that is with gene therapy, uh, CRISPR-Cas9, being able to take that X gene out. Um, so when I saw the press release saying that this triple combination drug came out, I read through it and it didn't say anything about nonsense genes except that they're doing more to help people with nonsense genes in a paragraph at the bottom. And I just assumed that once again it was just another drug that couldn't help me. But then I saw, I went through these articles because it, it was weird. Like, why would they mention helping people with nonsense mutations and not mention whether or not this drug helped nonsense mutations? It was a very unclear press release. <laughs> Um, so I looked up some more things, and this um, Vertex press release says that for the first time, approximately 6,000 patients with one minimal function mutation, a stop mutation, or a nonsense mutation, and one F508 delta mutation have medicine to treat the underlying cause of their disease. And then I, of course, had to look up the table for that because I was unsure, and so I went to their study for this back in April 2018, the list of all of the mutations that work as the second mutation, and R553X. There's a Kaleidico drug that actually works for me. I saw that press release, and it just kind of, eh. I brushed it off because I didn't want to think about it too much, because you think about Oh, another thing that can't help me too much, and it just gets depressing. And then now, I don't want to get too- I'm not very excited right now, and that's for a reason. I got excited when Kaleidico first came out, um, because I was mistaken, thinking that it did work for my mutation. Um, and then every time a new, different version of Kaleidico has been approved, it's the same story, so if I don't seem particularly excited, it's because I'm in a state of disbelief. <laughs> Every time I've read something and been convinced that there is something that was going to treat the underlying cause of the disease for me, it turned out to be a false alarm. And this time I legitimately don't think it is. There's a lot of stuff going around on social media from people that are reacting to this very emotionally. Um, and that didn't happen when any of the other spin-off Kaleidico drugs got approved or made it to the next step of the trial or whatever, which convinces me that everything that I've read, I mean, the Vertex press release, it took me, the CF press release didn't say anything about it, the FDA press release didn't say anything about it, I had to go to the actual site of the pharmaceutical company, and the first bullet point on their site says that it treats minimal function mutations. Why couldn't everyone else's press release say that front and center, so then have to go digging to know that this was going to work for me? But it is. I'm gonna have to wait to finish recording this because I think I need to say what I need to say about it when I'm not in this state of disbelief right now. I feel like a twig. It's being held on both ends and just like all the pressure is being applied. And the metal's gonna break at some point and I'm gonna become an emotional wreck. So I'm just hoping to get this video done before then. Which is why I'm still in my pajamas. Now the end of the day. And I haven't gotten anything done, possibly because of how much this has been on my mind. I tend to get mad at medical related laws because in trying to make healthcare more affordable for more people, it's taking money away from the medical industry as a whole. 
We can't give healthcare to more people without decreasing the cost of it, which means that the medical industry as a whole gets less money, and the U.S. is responsible for more than half of the medical research in the entire world. So, yeah, we overpay, and it sucks. But to me, that's worth it, because it means that this kind of research can get done. And now I'm about to start having to pay that kind of stuff in the next few years, and maybe my perspective will switch, and I'll wish I were paying less. But I hope my view doesn't switch, because that would seem selfish, that I wanted it to be expensive for the sake of research, for everyone that needed it, and then once I had everything I needed, I decided that I wanted it to be cheap. That just... I really hope that this feed doesn't switch because I don't want to be that person. But we're at that point now where if no more CF research happened, I could probably live a reasonably long life. And I never thought I'd say that sentence. Okay, I thought I'd say it, but I thought it would be 20 years from now when I was hanging on to life, not right now. Every year since I was born, the median lifespan for someone with CF has gone up by one year. It's around 39 and a half right now, I think, and it was around 20 when I was born. That was largely because of Pomazyme that came out like six months before I was born. And I wouldn't doubt that the availability of these types of drugs for almost everyone with the disease will add another 20 years onto the lifespan. And while median lifespan for everyone else is still around 80, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I used to worry about not being able to have kids. I mean, I'm not going to be able to have kids, period. Um, naturally, anyway. It will have to be IVF because of the nature of CF, and I don't think any drug can change that. But the way the genetics of CF works is that if I married someone who was a carrier, then that would guarantee the child had CF. If I married someone who wasn't a carrier, that would guarantee the child was a carrier. And so I worried that I wouldn't be able to have kids if my future spouse was a carrier. But now we might be to the point where having a kid with CF isn't that big of a deal. It's not that big of an impediment on their life anymore. And it's like, before it wasn't ethically okay to have a kid if you knew they were going to have CF. And I think that might change because of this. Again, it's not a cure. But it does enough to tend to the disease. And I think it'll be enough enough to make it ethical to have a kid with CF, enough that people with CF don't feel like they pulled the short straw. I certainly don't. Up until now I've said, you know what, if I'm only going to live to be 40, that means I have to do twice as much with every second. And now halfway through that, it's possible that I just got 20 years added onto my life. This is all conjecture, but 15% improvement in lung function equaling 20 more years sounds about right. And that's amazing. I'm going to try and post more CF related stuff with better production quality than this, um, hopefully once a week on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.